Beep, 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 beep. All this new, new to prove. No, it's not all this new. This is the Sheffield thing continuing. All right, so <clears throat> I've had the lurgy for the last couple of days. I had a terribly bad eye yesterday and, you know, but you know, when you aches and pains and all that stuff. So I was supposed to meet an old friend yesterday and I was really looking forward to seeing her. And I couldn't make it because I was just aching all over. Um, I'm blaming Clive Simpson because he's been ill. He sent it to me via the ether. Um, oh, that reminds me, there's a really good Queen's Speech up now, the latest one. So if you want to see the Queen's Speech by Clive and Dennis, I'll put that in the Dubras as well today, OK? So what you've got in the Dubras today is the link to the substack that goes with this so that you can continue to watch along. Um, this is part four um, of the Sheffield University analysis of their LGBT plan. Uh, again, all the links are in the Substack, which is open to everyone and free to everyone. If you want to read along, look at the link in the Dubris below and go to the Substack so that you can read along. If you can buy me a coffee to continue the work, please do. We're only up to point 12. It's, in, it's insane, the depth to which this is uh, intricately written in order to capture everything. So um, please do buy me a coffee if you can. Usual stuff. I'm going to crack straight on. So what we have here is um, action point 1.9 to action point one. Uh, point one two. So this is a. I think that there's then four more which I will cover in the next few days. So let's see what action point one point nine is for Sheffield University in their LGBTQ plan. And what we have here is the following: review and enhance allyship work under the umbrella of open at TUOS to ensure it is relevant and recognisable to, and understood by students and staff encourages and empowers active allyship. Now there's some very important use of terminology in here as well as, as the as what appears to be the setting up of an infi of an affinity group called Open at TUOS, uh, which is essentially allows anyone to join and show allyship, which of course is, is woke speak for fealty, fealty to the group belief system of the TQ plus and is designed to proliferate and codify the plan that we are currently analyzing together. So there you've got the work of, the wording of allyship, important, remember this, allyship under the umbrella of open TUS, relevant and recognizable and empowers active allyship. Again, the wording of the folk, of the, of the wokesters there. And they want the outcome from this to be increased visit, visibility of and awareness of LGBT plus activities. Increased visibility. Every other week, some twat's got a flag on his backside. Increased visibility of and awareness of LGBT activities, with more students and staff actively and effectively contributing to LGBT plus inclusion. Well, what that means, folks, is, in my analysis, we can see here that they refer to awareness and a visibility of LGBT plus uh, activities. Well, what activities might that be? What are they up to? And how does this imposed and forced team monolith deserve or justify activities of their own over, for example, say, disability, which is the only one that should have any form of singling out as a, as a, uh, a protected characteristic that needs the most input and the most help from everybody else to be effective? They, they're these self-centred narcissists. I'm sorry, that's what they are. More importantly, what purpose, but for what purpose... We could rightfully ask, do they want everybody to, do, to be doing this active, um, uh, empowered action that they're going to give them? And once again, we've got in that statement of outcome there, a call for all students and staff for more inclusion. In what? Has the university been actively excluding LGBT people? No. It hasn't been excluding people who are same-sex attracted. No. Because it's got nothing to do with being gay and everything to do with the belief system of TQ plus and capitulation to it. In plain sight, let's move on to action point one point zero one zero. I'm well aware it's Sunday and I don't want to keep you. Oh, I haven't even seen the vote yet as to whether it's going out today. I'll have a look at a minute before uh, before I I get it get it set up. So action point one point one zero. What they intend to do is reading from their plan here, conduct a systematic review of provision of toilets across the estate with a view to developing an inclusive policy for toilet provision which meets the needs and preferences of our diverse communities of students and staff. 
proposed alterations and or new provision should be made following early consultation in the design process with representative LGBT plus staff and students, students and staff with disabilities and others, and following quality impact assessments. When I go to the toilet, right, this is me speaking now, when I go to the toilet, right, I go in there and I have a pee, I say, in public, because I, I don't, like many people, I can't, I can't do a number two outside of the house. <laughs> when I go on holiday, I'm constipated for the first week, it's terrible, right, so I, you get it right, so, when it comes to women, they may, we may well use toilets for far, far more complex reasons than men will understand, based on the fact that they are women. This is frankly un unbelievable. Action 1.0. To develop an inclusive policy for toilet provision which needs needs and preference of our diverse communities. Last time I looked, you, we all shit and piss. The only needs and diversity required of a toilet is that women are able to do womanly things. You know, what women do, the actual female reality of using these kinds of safe spaces and uh, single sex spaces is the only thing that matters. Only thing. Not LARPing men. Or LARPing women who want to get in those spaces for whatever bloody... I don't care what reason. It's a safeguarding issue. That's action one point six. See, the women get it every time. What is wrong with these stupid people? Let's move on before I get too angry. Right? And what we've got to bear in mind here is the waffle about assessments and consultation is immaterial. There are only two sexes. And we only require single sex toilets and facilities. And you do not need more than your common sense to know that. Equality impact. We're going to do an equality impact and assessment of what will happen if we open up all female spaces to all men who self-identify as women. There's your equality impact assessment, right? That's the, that's the first thing, isn't it? No, it's the second, right? Let's put the first line of their equality and impact assessment. Does this equality impact assessment contain any ideas that have come from gender ideology or queer theory? And if the answer is yes, that's the assessment done. You don't do the activity. The second one is, well, you get my drift. I'm angry see about this now. It's bloody really annoyed me this morning. Imagine you go in, you go in, it's, it's university day, and there's that young person who's going to go to university. You must be so excited, you know, to be getting away. First of all, from the family, which is what they're supposed to do. Not with, you know, not that may not be joyful for them, but it's something they should do. And, and they go off, you go with your mum and your dad and your little sister who's eight. Yes, but it's only some men. It doesn't matter. The point is it could be one man. That's why it's a safeguarding issue. Right? That's why it's a safeguarding issue. That poor little girl. You go to the toilet, we'll stand here and wait. They just don't give a crap about women, do they? And I'll say this, under 1.010, trans identifying females are not a man's problem and trans identifying males are not a woman's problem. It's that simple. I should say a male's problem and not a female's problem. Then what, what's the outcome they want from this? Let's have a look at the outcome for this, uh, for this uh, quite frankly, insane idea that they can breach the Equality Act and do so, and the public sector equality duty, and do so with impunity. In addition to using gender new toilet facilities of choice, trans and non-binary staff. Non-binary staff don't exist in legislation. You're breaching the Equality Act, Okay. Students and visitors will also have improved access to good quality inclusive toilet provision, which means you have to shit next to a bloke. Right? Or I have to be in the toilet, doing what men do in the toilet, while there's some trans-identified female who may have bought one of those weird things you can buy so they can pee up, pee stood up, right next to me. Go away. I don't want women in my spaces. And I know that women don't want men in their spaces. Not when it comes to ablutions. You should be at a blute alone. That's what I say. I joke, but it's serious. They don't give a damn about women. That's it. It's that simple. Um, I put underneath that, I'll just read it again because I lost the plot then. Outcome 1.10. In addition to using gendered toilet facilities of choice, trans and non-binary staff, students and visitors will also have improved access to good quality inclusive toilet provision. This is a disgraceful declaration that allows those with a mental condition and or a fantasy belief system to colonise same-sex spaces on the basis of self-ID. This is the university accept accepting the belief system as absolute and unquestionable. Absolute and unquestionable. That, that's the point in this. 1.11. 1. 1. 
where the university says without hesitation, this belief system is the only belief system we have. Let's look at the next one. Sorry, 1.10 that was, I believe. 1.11, here we go, gets worse. Review the provision of changing facilities in current and future sports and exercise estate. Proposed alterations and or new provisions should be made following early consultation in the design process with representative elders. It's the same as the one above, except about other spaces that are single sex. Um, so really there, is, there isn't much more to say. This simply should not even be up for consideration and is cult pandering that will allow males to undress in the same facilities as females and vice versa. Um, the answer is no. You do not need an equality impact assessment to tell you that. The answer is no. End of. So what's uh, the outcome that they want for that? Well, let's have a quick look. 1.1 outcome. 1.11 outcome. Sports and exercise facilities will be better to meet the needs of LGBT, LGBT plus staff, students and visitors. So in order, take off the LGB, it's the T and the Q, isn't it? So in order that they can uh, advance their cult, what they'll do is they'll exclude everybody else who doesn't think this is a good idea in order to please the two TQ plus staff, student and visitors who are essentially uh, nutters in my book, I'm afraid. That's it. If they think this is OK, they're nutters. Sports and exercise facilities, and I've interpreted that, sports and exercise facilities will be able to better meet the needs of LGBT plus staff, students and visitors. And I've simply put, sports and exercise facilities will not be able to do that at all as they sacrifice everyone else on the altar of TQ+. Let's have a look at the last one for today, Active Point 1.12. Review... Let's see. Review Sports Sheffield web pages and booking sites to ensure gender neutral terms and relevant information is available for LGBT plus students and staff. This will include review branding, imagery and campaign opportunities to embed, embed LGBT plus visibility stories and voices and celebration of role models. Leah Thomas, who is a LARPing man that managed to take a spot away from women while he practices daughter gynophilia, is not a role model to anyone. To anyone. A LARPing bloke in a dress. What I've responded to that is, the mer other than that rant, the merchandising and paraphernalia of the cult will be boldly displayed and the proselytising of adherents and acolytes will be raised above all others. The site will actively campaign for gender ideology and queer theory believers. Make no bones about it. That Those last three show an utter contempt for women and by default that for, for females and by an utter contempt, you know, for men or males, and I say female or male, because female is both child and, you know, adult. So that's why the word is correct. Um, they just don't care. We've had the Leah Thomas scandal. We've got all sorts of nonsense going on about sport, and we know damn well that this shouldn't be happening. But yet here they are. This was written and put out this month, in the last two weeks. Despite everything that was said in the Rindoff report, despite everything that's been said previously about the ridiculous LARPing men in sports, particularly in sports that women might get hurt in, like rugby or football. But yet, what do we have? We have the University of Sheffield pampering to fetishists, paraphiliacs and the mentally unwell. So let's just leave that where it is, shall we? 1.12. That's where we'll end today. And there's another four to come in the next couple of days as I continue my analysis. I do hope it's proving useful. Please let me know if it's proving useful, if there's anything you'd like me to do. Um, somebody asked if I can if I can write it down. I already do. It's on the Substack. So if you just go and have a look in the links and you'll see it there in the Dubris. Um, other than that, well, what can we say here? What we've got there is four points, a four point plan, um, three of which are a direct attack upon the privacy and the safety and the um, ability of women to operate freely in society without having to be fearful and with the um, importance of an organisation saying this is a female only space being totally removed. Sheffield University, you should hang your head in shame. Absolute shame. I had an interesting message yesterday. Apparently the individual I'm unhappy with has got a grace and favour house and rather a large salary. You there, Jill? Talk to me.